Hey YouTube, it's your girl, Baby Zanae. Um, just taking a short detour off my hair journey, and um, right now I'm on my breast cancer journey. I was diagnosed with breast cancer on April 11, 2014. Um, I am seven days, eight days post op from a double mastectomy. Um, that would have been my fourth surgery. Um, they tried to go in at least... I had four surgeries total and I just finally gave up and was like, you guys can't get it. I just want this stuff out of my body and done and over with. Um, had a great team of doctors, Dr. Maisel, Dr. Slavak. They did a wonderful job. I mean, you can barely, they look like, I still have cleavage. I don't know how they managed to do that, but they did. And I had no scars or bruising. Um, it is YouTube, so that's about it. all you're going to get out of me. Um, but I just... Right now, I just I'm recovering, and it's been eight days, and I've had trials and I've had tribulations, and I've had trial and error, and so I pretty much know what works and doesn't work. One thing I will tell you for sure, what does work is just having a, a, a good group of people on your side working with you. It doesn't have to be a lot. You don't need a whole tribe. You know, I, that was one of my main concerns when I first found out that I had cancer was. That my family that I knew would care for me was so far away and that nobody would be able to, to take care of me the way I wanted to be taken care of. And I knew that my husband had to work. Um, but my husband's mom has been great. Unfortunately, um, this morning she lost her brother, so I'm not sure how much help she's going to be. In my But that would be my, brother, my husband's uncle. Um, but she's been wonderful and I just want to shout out to her. Um, and then people give you trinkets. So the purpose of this video today is for me to just um, go over what did work for me while I was recovering. What may make you comfortable while you're recovering. Um, some tricks that I've learned. Um, and some things that I think you you want to talk to. I think before I go into any of um, like the gifts and things that I was given is the most important thing to me... Um, is to make sure that you talk to your doctors about your cares, your fears, or whatever. Um, because I know that the, the, my brother died in January. Um, he had an anesthesia accident. And um, he didn't wake up from anesthesia. And they put me to sleep four times. So my mother has been like a total wreck. Um, I spoke to my, my first anesthesiologist um, about... I knew that they said that after surgery my throat would be sore and that would be fine. Um, I thought I could get through the, the, the sore throatness. Don't underestimate when they tag you, your throat is going to be sore. I mean, it's going to be sore. Um, my second surgery, because of the sore throat from the first one, I sat down in detail and I explained to him. I'm like, I don't know what y'all did to me the first time. I said, I can't go through. I can't be in this much pain with my breasts and still have to deal with the sore throatness. I mean, I would like to eat. So, the second doctor I explained it to, the third doctor I explained it to, one of the surgeries, I can't remember if it was my second or third, I had no sore throat whatsoever because I talked to my doctor. When they got to the point where they wanted to do a double mastectomy, I was like so paranoid, you know, about this upcoming surgery. Um, my doctors tried to break the ice. I was very emotional because they were going to put install my chemo port which they did at the same time, and I had too much stuff going on, and my, my biggest mistake was forgetting to talk to my anesthesiologist. Because I did that, in addition to all of the other things that I had to go through, I had the worst sore throat ever. I mean, the roof of my mouth developed these two horrible um, contusions um, from them trying to get the breathing apparatus down my throat. Um, my tongue was coated with this white substance. I could not swallow. I still cannot swallow. I could not eat, drink. I'm talking water. Um, the only thing that gave me any relief um, was milkshakes. And even the milkshakes was excruciating because of the temperature. And you can't live, really drink a warm milkshake. So what's the purpose? Um, but I'm telling you, you must remember to talk to your anesthesiologist. Now... I've tried everything in the book to get rid of that. I've tried gargling with salt water. I've tried hydrogen peroxide. I tried chloroseptic. I tried biotin. They gave me a prescription. Okay? Eight days later. You see this? 
None of that work. My throat's still sore as hell. I can't swallow. I can't drink. Can't do anything. Okay. So like like I said before, I just feel so bad that you know I was just so overwhelmed by the moment. Write it down if you're not gonna remember. But nothing hurts worse than you not being able to sleep, not being able to eat, drink, swallow, or anything. Having this much pain go on, having to deal with your drains, um, being emotionally whatever. You can't sleep at night. I have, um, I have this lounge chair. This I don't know if you can see it or not. It's motorized. It goes um, up and down. You know, it allows me to like try to sleep comfortable. It doesn't work. Um, there is no comfort zone here. Um, I tried to sleep in the bed because um, they say you have to stay elevated so that you drain correctly with your drains. So I got one of these big wedge pillow things to put on my bed. That didn't work. I still wake up in the middle of the night in agonizing pain. Um, I use this for under my legs to keep my legs elevated right right below my knees to try to keep those elevated. Um, my friend Karen made me these wonderful pillows and they help me especially when I'm in this chair because I just kind of like throw each one under each arm and then I can just lay back and chill. And relax, and then if I find myself drifting off, I just throw on this, and then if I like drift off to the side, I don't get a kink in my neck. But I also use it for um, a butt cushion sometimes because I have like this um, tailbone pain a lot too, so that also makes it awkward. Sometimes I actually have to sit on it too, but it's helped me a, a whole lot. Um, what are the other things that I do? In the hospital, they gave me this string here. It's Velcro. Um, you put it around your, your neck. And um, your drains actually have um, little hooks on them. The drains that come out of your side. And um, you just hook them onto this thing. When you take a shower, you hook it onto here and just pull it through. And... Um, that helps make your shower more comfortable. I suggest you getting a shower with a shower head detached so that you can spray your areas and you're not getting um, yourself wet. Um, and so this wonderful outfit that I'm wearing now was made by my friend Romaine. I love it. Um, I did request she make it a little bit oversized for me so that I could like, you know, move around and feel comfortable in it. So it kind of fits like a you know, a nice swing top, very comfortable, um, it has pockets on the inside, it holds my drains, and I don't know if you can see my drains, but they're up under there, so you can see my drains, um, my friend Erin, thank you for this beautiful, um, pink necklace that she made me, um, very beautiful, um, Kathy made me this cute little sleep shirt. It's very comfortable for me to sleep in at night. It doesn't get too hot. It um it also has pockets on the inside to hold my drains. And I, you can also use a safety pin. I don't know what happened to my safety pin. But you can also use a safety pin to safety pin your drains to your shirt. But um, I don't like that because when I'm tossing and turning at night, that the whole shirt pulls. And, oh, my goodness, when that drain pulls, it is so excruciating. So if you could just find someone to even make you some pockets and just iron them onto the inside of a shirt. Or if you have a lot of friends like mine who know how to sew, who can make you a shirt, then that would be absolutely wonderful. Um... Take your pain meds because you're going to need them. Um, and just don't feel too down on yourself. Just get up and just try to do at least one thing a day when you feel like you can. But don't overdo it because I felt like when I first started to feel better. Because they were telling me I wouldn't be able to move my arms. But I didn't have any trouble with not. I mean, you. I couldn't raise them to like past here. But they was like, oh, you're not going to be able to unscrew your toothbrush or this. My doctors must have been wonderful because I didn't have any of that. Like, I could still brush my teeth. I had a, um, I have a power toothbrush. 
maybe that helped. But I use my power toothbrush. I'm able to take care of my drains. I will actually yesterday I was able to use a, can, a hand can opener and get a can open. Um, what else? Um, and you may have to start off sleeping in the bed, and then in the middle of the night you may find that you have to get up and then get into a chair. Um, you're going to be waking whoever you're sleeping with up all night long because you're ne there's never going to be a comfortable position because you basically have to stay on your back. You can't turn to your sides because of the pulling of the drains on each side and there's drains on both sides. Um, and you just basically are going to be sleeping on your back for a while. So um, I hope um, that I've covered all of your comfort tips. I'm just looking around to try to see if I can remember anything else. Um... I guess having my kitty help too because she's always there. Little Nicki Minaj. She's not in the room. She's over there sleeping right now. I'm not going to bother her. But when there's no one else here with me, she brings me so much comfort. And I don't know why I feel like I need her in the room with me at night. Like, I'm like, they're coming to get me. The Grim Reaper or somebody. And I'm like, if she sees them coming, she's going to wake me up and let me know they're here. I don't know. But, um, it helps to have my pet here. I don't know what's going to help you, but... I hope that um, you find some comfort some way, somehow. Um, as far as a bra, your doctor will determine whether or not you will or will not wear a bra. To me, I found it more comfortable to wear a sports bra. Um, the ones that hook in the front, just because I've just gotten to the point where I'm able to pull something over my head, is the reason why I just have on just this regular um, sports bra. But to me, I experience less pain with the bra on, but not one that's too tight. Um, so, that's where I am right now. And I hope this helped make you comfortable. And hope that you're healing well. Till next time, I'll see ya.